Okay. Right. What are you saying? <laughs> it's, uh, it's not my first rodeo. Let's sync them all up. <laughs> One, two, three. Bosh. Why two? Uh, it just... I don't know. I've always done it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone know why we clap twice? I don't really know. Uh, folks, it's Phil from Paint Nation. Yeah. The elusive. The elusive. <laughs> Welcome back to Brew Time. You can see it's probably a little bit different. I'm up here at my motto, Manchester, because the lid's ready. We're doing the unveiling of the lid. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I am so excited about this. <laughs> so, this was... Shall we talk about the lid then? Yeah, yeah, please do. Right, so... Yeah. The original thing that, for me, with the helmet was we come into COVID, mm -hmm. and there was a period where I was like, I've just been doing flat out race work. I'm, I think I was in twenty eighteen or twenty nineteen. Would it have been? I did about hundred and I think in twenty eighteen I did one hundred and fourteen helmets with someone working with me, wow. just for races. Yeah. And then the following year, I think I topped just over 100, but on my own. That was a absolute killer. I bet. And then COVID happened, and it was like, we didn't know whether BSB was going to happen. Yeah. TT, I think, was off, for definite. Northwest 200 was off. Mm -hmm. So I was a bit like, oh, well... I'm, what now? What now, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and that's when I kind of got in touch with you and said like oh do you fancy a lid <laughs> <laughs> no okay then yeah yeah <laughs> so um that's where it started and then it didn't really uh slow down over covid because he still ran it all but without any yeah, yeah. any crowds so there was still a <laughs> hundred lids or whatever it was to get through and yeah it was still a bit chaotic jesus a bit more than what i anticipated i have had so many people like dropping messages going Whatever happened to that lid? Because that was like 2020, <laughs> 2021, wasn't it? Yeah. And uh, I, I was just like, oh, excuse me. I was just like, um, well, I, I, I don't know, because, oh, hang on, that stopped. Right, sync everything <laughs> up again. One, two, three. Right, folks, first technical issue there. For some reason, that camera stopped. So we're going to, as long as these are blinking, keep an eye on these, will we? <laughs> Like, so all those nuggets of information, <laughs> all those revelations. It only, when, when did it cut out? We just spoke about, oh uh, yeah, well, we just started saying it was about 2020, 2021. 2021. That we, did, we did the yeah. consultation phase. Yeah. So if you've not seen that video yet, folks, make sure you check that out. That'll be yeah. over on the Teapot One channel. Oh, Grub's arrived. Cheers. Um, <laughs> and now we are 2024. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone a bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. I kept like, and people kept asking what's going on and I'm like well I, I don't know because you're just doing this out of the kindness of your heart you're doing this as a favour to me so I was like well when, it, when it's ready it'll be it's ready, ready, you know, ready. I'm not. and then at one point I suddenly thought what if you sent it to me and it's never arrived I remember that phone call and you just got the arse because I've never said it yeah. <laughs> so I had to phone you up and go Phil have you sent that yet I, I have had it where I've sent a helmet and thought did they get it because yeah. you haven't heard back yeah. normally you hear back um, but yeah, it's, it, that's normally if it's duplicate. So if it's a race helmet and they've already seen the design before. And, yeah. yeah it's so it's not another. a surprise or anything like that to no, them. No. I literally have no idea. I know as much. If you've seen the consultation vid, vid where we went through just some initial design, that's all I know about this lid. I know it's a Shuey Hornet ADV lid uh, and what we spoke about in that first vid. That's Did we it. have a consultation? Well, we, we sat at... Um, I was working up for design. <laughs> we? we were just chatting away, weren't we? And you were like, we could do this, just scratching on a bit of paper. This we could, could do this, we could do that. Could. Well, I can't wait to see it. <laughs> no, if you, if you can remember what we talked about, then it's, yeah. it's along them lines. So... Can't wait. They might be a little bit different because of where things line up and whatever. Got you. Yeah. So, folks, if you are listening to this podcast... I suggest you get yourself across over to YouTube, to the Brewtime channel, and um, watch it there, because otherwise you're just going to listen to me gush and probably cry. <laughs> um, what do you want to do? Shall we unveil, or do you want to chat a bit more about... What, your, what? It's completely up to you. Do you want to save it till the end? No. Do you want to see I, it? I, I think we unveil, we have a look, and then we just go through we can tell elements of the design. Okay. Are you sure? Yes. <laughs> Oh, no, actually, this is like the best right. Christmas ever. So the the other thing with offering to do the helmet for you mm -hmm. was because 
Um, it wasn't. I I I was maxed out work wise. Yeah. So I've never really been looking for more work. Um, in all the years I've done the helmet painting, the amount of replicas I've done of racers' helmets for people, for yeah. the public, yeah. I could probably count on my hands. You know, it's it's not a lot. Um, so it was more about the experience of getting a custom helmet and what it's like to own one, mm -hmm. which I thought if you had one, you'd probably be a good person to kind of, so people understand like, yeah. Because one the, the thing I always find with custom helmets as well is once you've had one, <laughs> it is so hard to then have something that someone else might have yeah. going off the shelf. So, um, so I, I, I hate being a sheep. Like, I just yeah. I don't like following well, you, hard. Although I have a GS, I appreciate all that, and I wear a rocker suit. But I just, you know, I like as part of the reason I did the, the big trip on a sports bike was to be different. Was to be different. You know, yeah, and, yeah. and why well, I take the GS to the track is to, is to be different because people don't expect it, and I, I like that. Mm. So, yeah, buying a lid off the, you know, buying a helmet off of the shelf that anyone else can go and get, it kind of, and most of the time I just end up getting like a black one or a white one or something. And when you did your world trip, it mm. was a custom lid. Oh, yeah, it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, was that your last time you had a custom helmet? It was, yeah. Do you want to do the unwrapping? Yeah, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. Uh, wow. Wow. <laughs> How does this work? There we go. See, this is this is part of the payment for me. This is a bit I love seeing. <laughs> All right, I'm going to keep my eyes shut when I do this. Oh, man. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. There's the thistle. Oh, <laughs> oh wow. Wooha Ranch. <laughs> oh, mate. You've got the two different styles of road there as well, haven't you? Off-road and tarmac. And where the tarmac breaks up at the back is the world it's map. It's the world map. Oh, <laughs> mate. I'm going to end up just sat here looking at this for hours, aren't I? And these signs are all kind of... Well, not all of them, but most are customised. So, um, for instance... M25, London, TP1, 74,000 miles. Love it. I just saw, I just saw Countries 54, the American yeah. road sign. But if you actually, so if you look at it from the start, mm -hmm. you started off in London. Yeah. Your original trip. Yeah. Hazard sign. Hazard. U-turn. <laughs> U-turn. <laughs> you went up to Scotland. Yeah. Now these, you probably have to do the translation, but if I remember rightly, that's live your life. Oh, wow. What's that in it? In like Russian or something? What was it? See, th this is the bit I started struggling with because <laughs> I had to, I watched like say I watched your orig the original series over again. Yeah. To go well, I knew you went there. This happened. So this is obviously in Japan uh -huh. where we went a bit you should have gone around the bend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so that isn't a real sign. I had to make yeah. a sign with a crash thing on it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was the kangaroos. It's the whole little elements of the whole trip. And then you've got your world map and it going from tarmac to dirt as it goes around. So. I love that, mate. That is incredible. Oh, wow. I love you've got the Scotland flag, the Union flag. Mint. And how light is this lid when there's not a camera and all the <laughs> comms kit and everything in it? <laughs> yeah. I love, the, uh, I love that thistle. <laughs> that is awesome. What I'm going to end up doing, folks, is obviously I'm going to take a load of B-roll, which I'll cut in as we're talking about this. So you will be seeing what we're talking about, hopefully. If not, then I've forgotten to do it, but I will do it, I promise you. <laughs> Mate, that is awesome. I love that. One of the things that um, kind of, when I thought about obviously doing your design and the idea of the thistle being on the top, and then the Hornets got these slashes. Yeah. And I was like, oh, it looks so cool if they were the, the like the leaves. Yeah. So the that's kind of one of my favourite little elements is using the shape of the helmet to work with the design. How the hell do you come up with this? How do you do this? Something <laughs> that I always think, if someone asked me to do that again, I couldn't. It's a in the moment <laughs> thing. And really? then when it's done, I look at them and I go, how did I do that? <laughs> oh, mate. 
you just it's like every time you look you, you pick up more detail from it love it yeah i mean that literally is a road map of the trip as a trip yeah you'll be able to see folks but all around the back here with these road signs they just they all mark the different stages of the trip i love it and that map is mint you see how the the way the the, the tarmac fades through off, the map and then yeah. into the off road bit. Oh man! And then the tires hit the dirt. Yeah, <laughs> that is incredible. Oh, and you even kept the chin clear for the camera as well. Yeah, man. that was intentional. I yeah. knew when I was weighing it up where to put the teapot ones. I thought yeah. I need to just pull them back because you're gonna have your camera central. So, wow! Come on then, talk us through. So. How did you start? How did you start with this? Uh, obviously, after the consultation, we had the idea of the road, yep. the dropping the the details in about the trip. So that's that was what I took away from it. We had the Union Jack. We were we did mention about having the Union Jack with the brake in it, yeah, because the the frame broke. Was that yeah. Russia? Uh, yeah, it was, and the yeah. guy welded it because yep. that was another element I was looking at. Oh, I forgot about that. Russian yeah. signs for welders and things like that. I was yeah. thinking, I'd kind of drop that in there. Um, but just by the time I'd worked out the space that I had for the signs, how big they would be, it, you, you kind of work out how many you're going to have and then what you're going to want to put on it. And, yeah. Um, and I can't I really wanted to have the U-turn at the start because that is the trip for me when I watch it is the attempt to the coming back, the yeah. reset and yeah. the try again. And it's just like... As a as a story, it's that not giving up, mm. Joe, and, and persevering, and it. I, I didn't realise that at the time. You know, at the time of the trip, the opportunity to go again. I mean, it, it it was pivotal, wasn't it? Because without 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 like Delta Energy Services, give them a plug. Without them coming on board, mm. chances are it probably never would have happened. Because it took three years and selling everything I own just to do that first part. Yeah. So I think without their injection and that change of mindset that that Africa caused me to have, the, the second, the, probably the second, the actual trip wouldn't have happened again, I think, if, if all that hadn't happened beforehand. You know what I mean? If, yeah. I, if I'd just come back to the UK and that was it, would, I, would have I eventually got it up and running again? Well, I hope I would have, but I, I don't yeah. know because it... Like it, it, it really did reset my mind. Like I've got the opportunity. Let's go. Yeah. But I don't. I didn't appreciate it at that time. It's only afterwards now, when I have people like you and so many other people come to me and go, you know, that is the bit of the trip that really stuck with me. That you yeah, went yeah. for it again, and I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. I suppose I, I never really thought about it till you mentioned it. Yeah. Without, without the lows, the highs just aren't the same. Are they? Totally so true. Yeah. You kind of you see you at absolute despair of what had happened and yeah. going back and. Mm. And you, when you watch it, you put yourself in that position of like, you've just had this like big leaving do uh -huh. and everyone. Yeah. So you, you can just see <laughs> in your mind what you let going down. through. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. And when you watch it, it, that comes, in fact, anyone who's watching this brew time has not been and watched that original series <laughs> should be back on it now. Cause that's know, I haven't, the, I haven't watched the foundation it. for all of it. Yeah. I think I'm going to have to go back and watch it again. There's a few <laughs> people saying, you know, you're going to do a re-edit of it. And part of me wants to, because I know how crap the original edit was, and there's some, you know, they're too long, and there's just the, the intro sequence on every single vid. You can yeah. just see people just switch off as soon as that starts. But the other part of me goes, well, that 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 was the trip. You know, it was edited on the road, and it was yeah. edited by me how I was feeling at that time. So maybe it wouldn't do it justice if I, if I, I don't know. Let me know, folks. If you think I should do a re-edit, let me know, and I can always do like a director's cut twenty yeah. years on. Did you get much in the way of still shots from it? Yeah, but don't forget phones. I think I had an iPhone one, or maybe an iPhone two then. So not a Nokia. Then. No. <laughs> no, no, no. It was an I'm iPhone. Right. I think it was. An, yeah, it was an iPhone, but it was like an early iPhone. Yeah. And my camera, like I had a proper compact camera with me, which was fairly modern, it was brand mm. new when I got it, but it was only 720. You know, there's no such thing as 1080 then. That, and that was filmed on an original GoPro. I had a GoPro 1 and a GoPro 2 with me, yeah. both of which were horrendous and continually knackered. Um, 
but yeah, you know, I've still got those cameras, but that's like watching the video for, you can see. It's like watching it through like cheese paper, cheesecloth. It's, it's horrible, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. But I've got some stills, but they're not the greatest quality. But yeah, yeah, I do have some. Oh, wow. I just want to sit and look at all this. Wow. <laughs> Sheesh. Was it worth the wait? <laughs> Mate, I'm so chuffed. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I love the flags. We've got good looking flags, don't we? The, Joe, you know when you kind of look at the, the helmet, the flags is actually one of the complex parts to do with that because it's the bit that's crossing over onto the, the peak. The peak. And, and if you look body. at the line up from where the peak is there to the flag behind it. God, yeah, look. It lines up still. Wow. Jesus, yeah. So didn't even think of that. Little things like that where you'll mask out the flag and then you've got to slice it, yeah. get the peak away, mask the bit that's missing, and then replace the peak and check that your lineups are still there. So you can take the peak off and you've still got... You've got to do it carefully. Yeah, yeah. You're going to mark stuff as it's going on and off, so it's a lot of, yeah. It's... Yeah, I won't take the peak off anyway. Oh, you can, yeah, you can take it off. Oh, to use, yeah, sorry, I mean, when you're painting it, though... Oh, right, right. And you're trying to check lineups. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to scuff the whatever you've already done, so... Yeah. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get my mate Pete to um, ceramic coat it as well. Mm. And it'll be doubly protected. Make awesome. sure your mount's stuck on the front before you get your ceramic coating. Good point. <laughs> Good point. Didn't think of that. Oh, dude. So, um, are we did we come, What was the most difficult part of this? Would you say? Uh, finding the time. The time. To do it. <laughs> That's what, what you mean. What, you know, you've only got like nine full-time jobs, <laughs> yeah. a family. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was a, there was a lot of changes happened since obviously meeting you to get that. Yeah. And then <laughs> being here now rather than... Uh, so come on then, where are we now? What's this all so about? Th this is now my moto Manchester. So it's... Uh, I'll, it, what, so we met in tw 2001. I can't remember when 2001? it was. 2001? No. Tw sorry, 2021. Yep. And... There was a lot of things happened. So Paint Nation I escalated to, I, well, I was at breaking point almost anyway. So I was doing seven days a week. Um, I mentioned in the original podcast we did, I did it because we were about to have kids and mm. it was flexibility of being yeah, able to, to pick up, drop off. And it um, initially I was doing three days a week doing some helmets just mm. to kind of cover some costs and Joe even took, used to, when we had our first one I was taking him to like kiddie groups and mm. stuff it was dead relaxed and chilled and, and it just escalated and escalated and the, the turning point really was when Monster Energy got in touch and asked if I wanted to do their work and there was a decision made between me and the missus it was like do I do I do this and follow it yeah. and see where it goes or do I scale it back and we ended up going for it um and it kept growing from there, but it ended up being working. So I'd drop the kids off at school or nursery, work about half nine till about four, four thirty, then go and pick them up, cook tea, yeah. eat tea, do bedtime, back in the workshop for about eight o'clock at night, yeah. work till two, three, couple of hours sleep, and then just repeat repeat and it got to that seven days a week which then obviously puts a strain on absolutely family and everything yeah yeah I, I was not the it, it most becomes, liked at that point. yeah and it becomes a job as well then we chatted yeah. about this earlier like when you're when you're passion again don't get me wrong i'm living the dream zero complaints but when your passion becomes your job and that's what you're doing all the time it is very easy to lose that passion mm. and you you really like we were chatting earlier about this in that at one point I kind of had to think to myself, right, what, why why are you doing this? Like, why why did this come into your life? And for me, it was getting out on the bikes, having fun, chatting shit on the cameras, you know, like even if it was just myself, just doing that sort of stuff, meeting people. And I hadn't done that in so long. Mm. Like I, I do it all, I do it on tours. I'm away on my tours all the time, but you're running tours for people, so you're you know you're you're making sure everyone's having a good time. You've yes. got all the logistics of everything. Other stuff going loads on. Loads of well. other stuff yeah. going on as well. Yeah. Um, if anything happens, then you know 
it's not like I'm going to, you're not going to abandon, you wouldn't abandon your mates and you wouldn't abandon punters, mm -hmm. but it's a different element when people pay to come away with you, you know, you've got added responsibilities there. Yeah. So it'd been so long for me since I'd just gone away on the bike and just done a trip myself, no worries whatsoever. And I'd just done that recently in the States and it was so good. It's like properly recharged the soul. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to make sure at least once a year, I, I, even if it's a long weekend, I just do something for me on the bike yeah yeah so it must have, did you get to that stage with the painting then where it was just like I, i'm done with this it the, the pinnacle i can sort of see the thing is now i'm not doing it all the race work mm. i can probably talk about stuff that I, I didn't talk about before um the pinnacle for me really there was a couple of breaking points um one was doing a helmet for michael laverty mm -hmm. and i was in the workshop and it got to about five in the morning. I'd done a massive stint. And I was shutting down. Like, what does that one say? Sorry to interrupt, folks, but just a quick shout out for this week's sponsors, who are, as always, Ultimate Add-ons. Ultimate Add-ons have been back in the podcast for the last few years, and I've been using their products since probably around about 2017, 2018. They specialize in phone holders, so both the mounts that attach to your bike and the protective cases that your phone goes in. Now, these cases are shockproof, they're dustproof. They're the perfect things to put your phone in whilst you're on the bike. And even if you do have a mishap, your phone is nicely protected inside that case. You can still use the phone, you can still use the touchscreen, you can even still use the cameras. They do a wide selection of mounts. I use the ratchet strap, which is actually in their cycle section, but you can pick any one you like for your particular bike or a generic one. It's up to you. Ultimate add-ons are also doing a number of other accessories, things like action camera mounts. They're also now doing heated grips. They do things like a balaclava, a USB, USB-C, power adapters, lots of different things. Head to their website, check out the products, and if you use the code TEAPOT1 with the number 10, TEAPOT110, then you will get 10% off. A massive thanks to Ultimate Add-ons for all your support. And a massive shout out to all of you over in the clan, over on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash teapot1. I literally could not do this full time without your support, folks. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for going that extra mile with your support. You're also the backbone of the Brew Time podcast with all your questions. So keep them coming and we'll go from strength to strength. Oh, sorry, sorry, folks. Uh, that's saying it's dis the phone is disconnected from right, the camera, okay. but the camera is still recording <laughs> as far as we can we're all right. We're all right. We've got flashy red lights, so hopefully we're all still recording. So, yeah, so I got to five o'clock in the morning, my body's shutting down. I'm trying to keep going, and, and I'm like, and, it, and, it, and it, this was like a if I didn't finish that helmet that mm. night, I'd miss the deadline to get yeah. to it. Yeah. And I, I gave up, and I was like, I'm, I need to go to bed, mm. I need to sleep. So I went, got into bed. And then I was just lay there going, I can't, mm. I need to go back. And I ended up torn between my body going, you're done, mm -hmm. and my head going, you can't let anyone down. Yeah. And and the, and it, I ended up going back to the workshop. I still didn't get it done because yeah, I was running done. on empty. Um, so that was probably, that was a peak. There was a time when I had a rider who asked for a special helmet, and I did. What did I do now? Three nights and two days solid. Mm -hmm. No sleep. Drove to Silverstone and dropped it off with him. Jesus. And you didn't sleep in three, I didn't sleep. three nights, two days? Yeah, non-stop. And then drove to Silverstone, dropped it off with him, and then fell asleep in the van in the car park at Silverstone. Yeah. Because at the moment it's gone, the pressure's, the pressure's gone, the adrenaline's gone. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then I'm pretty sure he didn't use it. No. And that really made me then go, well, why am I putting myself yeah. through this? What's the point? Joe, yeah, where, what, what am I doing here? So that was another kind of breaking point really for me. Um, so the, like you say, I, I got into painting helmets because I had a passion for bikes. Mm. I had a passion for painting. It was a and design. It was a good combination of all of them, um, but it got to the point where I, I never rode a bike because mm. I was tied to a workbench yeah. just to get all the helmets done. So yeah. 
Um, and everyone was telling me, like, you're overdoing it. My dad telling me all the time, you're overdoing it. And, yeah, so that kind of, like I say, pinnacled. And then COVID happened, and then my dad got ill, mm. which that was September 2021, mm. when he just... He said, like, uh, there was a little bit of blood when he went to the toilet. Mm. And, and that then made me start kind of thinking, yeah, what am I doing? Yeah. So, and when I found out, we found out he had cancer, um, which then, it's, a, it's a, I, I, I don't know how I dealt with it. I still don't really know how I deal with it. Yeah. Because prior to that, the only thing that I lost that was close to me was a cat. Yeah, you know, it yeah, was yeah. it was, and this was very different. Um, I remember ch- having chats with him, going, "Well, you know, you're 77 or 76 at the time, I think, when I was chatting with him." I said, "You, you've seen us grow up, get married, have mm. children. You've seen your grandchildren." Is there, what else would you have done that you mm. haven't done? And he was like, well, there's nothing. So I was kind of ju- saying, well, you've done good. Mm. And then I was going like, you know, you've ridden bikes all these years. Yeah. And you're still here. He worked on the railways, on the rail track. And he's seen lots of colleagues get flattened by trains. Yeah. And I was like, you're still here. So there was, uh, there was a bit of like chatting with him about that. But then in my head, I'm going... Because he said he said he remembered being in a tunnel with a diesel train running. He said it was so thick with diesel smoke he couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Mm-hmm. I was like, well, you've done well then mm-hmm. to be in that kind of environment. But then you start looking at yourself, going, well, I've been around paint mm. and fumes yeah, since I was yeah. young. Oh yeah, yeah. And then I start going, well, what impacts that had? Yeah, it's going to probably be the same fate for me, you know, yeah. at some point. And and it's made me definitely. I mean, unfortunately, my dad went through loads of treatments and um, 2022, he passed away, Um, which the whole process of his treatments was um, a bit of an eye opener to me. Mm. So there were, were, it was so much, seemed like stalling all the time, Mm. waiting for results waiting a week before they could all get together to talk about the results. Yeah. It was not, it wasn't good. Um, and they did some radiotherapy um, and it ended up fusing two parts of his organs together inside. God. So when it got to the point of, you know, this is bad, but we can cut it out and you, you don't need it, you can mm. live without, because it, it was bladder cancer. So when we can cut your bladder out and you can live without it. And he mentally prepped for that he was mm. like right okay we'll do that and then when they went they found that the radiotherapy had fused it to his bowels and he couldn't they couldn't cut it out mm-hmm. so that's changed my perspective now where I'm like if I get cancer somewhere and I can live without that bit mm-hmm. I would just want it chopping mm. out get it out me yeah. as quick as possible yeah, and yeah. I don't know what the I mean I'm no expert there must be a reason why they go down the routes to go down mm. but it's changed my outlook yeah of stuff um, you, and it also it, it it made me think more about him saying Joe you're overdoing it you need to kind of get a grip of this and yeah. so Phil who runs my moto Manchester he'd actually got in touch and was like would you be interested in doing social media and mm. marketing for the shop so I'm like well this is a wake up call and advice off my dad this opportunity's come up and the kids had all moved on to school. Mm -hmm. So the kind of the flexibility of one going to nursery, I mean, we had it at one point where one was at school, one was at nursery and one was in a buggy, you know? Um, So all three were in school. It just was the right time. Yeah. Um, And I was very, very fortunate, I think, for to have the opportunity to come here and do this and, do you know, like, I know I say this, people will be bored of listening to me saying this, but it just seems in life that it life just has this 
knack of throwing opportunities your way mm. when, like when you really need them yeah. something just comes and it's down to you to identify that yep this is an opportunity that i need mm -hmm. and going for it grabbing it and going for it it just it just seems to always happen people i speak to it's just like yeah well this this just came out of the blue and bang i think as well though some negatives mm. at the time seem like the end of the world but yeah can spin on to being something positive so yeah. joe you your initial trip and you ended up getting kind of turning around and heading yeah. back mm -hmm. You might not have. You might have hit difficulty further down the line yeah. and never attempted again. Yeah. But you came back, went into another attempt and managed it. And with you, a different mindset. With a different mindset. By the first, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, and if you'd never done the world trip, would you have ended up doing the channel? And if probably not. If you'd not done, Joe, you know, like what happened with the police, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. You would have never gone. No, no. So there's so many things where you could go. Oh, that's a negative. But in reality, there's a positive and. I take a positive from everything I've done. Joe, like people say to me about the helmet painting, do I not miss, like this is the first year now, I'm not gonna be painting for Michael Dunlop. Mm. Now it was my, I, I could have carried on, but it was my decision not to be, so, I mean, it's a lot to do this in the day and yeah. then go to a workshop in the evening and, and carry on. and. Yeah. I've said to people like, oh, you know, I just get home and I want to go to sleep. And they're like, well, that's real life. You know, this, <laughs> what you were living before is not reality. Yeah. What you're doing now is what you should be doing. Um, so then, you know, I've, I've pretty much got rid of most of the race work. I do just what I want to do. There is a bit of an, a knock on effect from overdoing it, like you said, where I find the getting out to the workshop is the hard bit. Mm. Once I'm in the flow and I'm doing stuff, I'm loving it. Right. But it's that, the thought of it's it. The, oh, I'll go and paint an helmet. And then there's a bit of me that's like. I, I get that. I'm like that with my roar. <laughs> <laughs> it's the thought of getting it's my fat ass on the roar. Out. After, once I've done it, it's just like, right, I'm going to do this every day. Yeah. Yeah. Another six months goes by. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so I mean. How I, do you cope with the downtime? Because you must have downtime now that you didn't have before. Um. I've got three young kids still. Yeah, so you occupy really, yourself with that. I, I don't, yeah. yeah, I don't feel like I have downtime. Yeah, no, I, I get that. I asked for, for my birthday when I turned 40, I asked for a night away with the missus. Mm. Just wanted a night away because you know what it's like when you've got young kids and it, you get that, you get a night away and you just book into the room and fall asleep. Go asleep. And yeah, then yeah. you wake up and go for a nice meal and you go back and have a few drinks and fall asleep again. It's... You think you're going to get that dirty weekend and all you want to <laughs> you do just is want sleep. sleep. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. So <laughs> I wanted this like night away. And I, what am I now? Am I 42? Or am I 41? But basically, it's still not happened. Yeah. We keep pen pencil it in. It doesn't happen. Yeah. Just because there's always so much going on. Um, I find like if, if I... If I take my foot off the gas and just go, right, you know, I'm going to do Monday to Friday and mm -hmm. I'm going to try and have weekends is just me and the missus or, you know, after six o'clock at night, it's shut down. Shut down. I'm not, I'm not going to be picking my phone up to, I'm sat there like this the whole time and I'm just like, I've got so much to do. Yeah. I mean, my missus just turns around to me and she goes, just go and, you know, just go just and go work. And do it. Yeah. Like she's like, I've got things to do. You go and, you just go and work. I'm like, yeah. okay. So I can't relax. Like if I if I do go on holiday or something, I'm sat there the whole time. Like I wish I brought my laptop. And my my wife even says to me now, just bring your laptop because I'll yeah. she'll be sat by the pool or you know sat on the beach or something. She said you'll do that for twenty minutes and then you'll be. <laughs> I'm like yeah, it's true. In my head, I'm like, uh, Joe, we'll have a night. We'll, I'll have yeah. a night off and yeah. we'll sit and watch telly and I'll sit down and she... Mrs. is watching something called Kin at the minute. I think it's called. No idea. And. Um, I'm not interested in it. So then you sat there going, this isn't how I envisaged <laughs> having a night <laughs> relaxing with the missus, you know? Yeah, you yeah, thought yeah. you'd be Joe, watching a film I might like or something. But And then you sit there for like 10, 15 minutes and you go... Bored. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just wasting my life. Out and, <laughs> and that's the other thing we're doing, obviously doing the marketing and social media stuff here. Yeah. That never really stopped anyway. So yeah. I find myself now going to my moto pages more than paint nation paint nation's right. like it's done what it needed to do uh -huh. i still get loads of people messaging me for stuff and and you can always come back to you can treat paint nation as your passion again yeah. can't you so that you know if you, if you want to do a lid you can really pick and choose i i 
see it more now like a secret society of yeah, like yeah, if yeah. you're in you're in if yeah. you're not in you're not in that's how i, well, I mean. treat it now. <laughs> so there's there's a few customers who i've worked for for years craig watson uh -huh. who has these the fluorescent feathers yeah. over the top yeah he's a regular who generally has a helmet every year pug wash pug wash he's had two um and then he actually asked i think he asked the other day if i could do another one so mm -hmm. he must have plans <laughs> um john mcavoy there's a few journalists but i kind of generally do what i want to do yeah when i want to do it yeah and I, I it's often for people who go you know I'd like the idea of this but do do your thing yeah and then I can get a bit creative with yeah. it yeah do you prefer that then when people just go a little bit of guidance because you want to make it yeah, yeah 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 so they like it but then it's nice to have that freedom to do a bit of creativity because a lot of the time you'll think of stuff on the spot mm -hmm. where if you've planned it and designed it you stick into a rule book then yeah but sometimes you're like mid thing you'll go oh, I could just yeah. drop that into there or I'm, I'm like that when I edit when I'm editing videos I'm like that like I, I don't I never film well certainly with the tour stuff you can't you can't record with something already well I can't already in my head because with the tour it's all just reactive mm. it depends what happens during the day depends what people say on the comms all this sort of stuff uh, other stuff yeah you know if you're doing like a, a camera review or I, I can I've started to mm. sort of write out almost a like a, like a script, script or, or a shot list memorize some of the need. features yeah and and they are actually so much easier to edit when you have some <laughs> idea of what the story is going to be for sure but when it comes to editing the tour stuff that's all reactive with me i just mm. i sit and i go through all the footage and go right this is what i've got and then i just start okay well i could do this to that and that to that. and it's just all reactive yeah. but it's really lengthy it's I take way too long to to edit vids, but I think it's because I think it's because I do it that way. It's just run and gun editing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So this is this is the thing that's new to me because when Phil offered me the job here doing the social media, I don't think he realised that all the paint nation videos are basically just time lapse. Yeah, yeah. It's not There's you no in front talking. of the camera. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you very rarely even see my face. So yeah. then I'm like, oh yeah, we'll do this job and. And then I, I remember the first time I had to talk to a camera and I, I thought I found a quiet spot and I set the camera up and I just felt like a right yeah. fool. Yeah. And and it's weird because it is getting easier. Uh -huh. Joe, the more I'm doing it, the more I'm getting used to yeah. Joe what say. But it's still like, the, the hardest bit always seems to be the first few words you say. Yeah, once and you're I'll, in it, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. Once, you, once you're in a roll, but yeah, the amount of times I've done like that. Welcome to the channel. Welcome back to. I, I did one the other day. I went because I, I quite often say welcome back to the channel. Yeah. And then I was like, what if it? What if it's the first time? Don't you know, they're not coming back. What do I say? Should I just say welcome to the channel? Yeah. You, know, you start kind of. Yeah. yeah don't, I, I just. I just. I. I. Always, I treat the camera like it's my mate. Mm. No, I just. I just treat the camera like it's my mate down the pub, and we're just having a chat. And. and you know, I don't, I don't, I don't think about it. It's a different story if I was out there. If I was out there walking around your showroom with a camera, yeah, I, would, I very rarely do that because I feel a complete plum chatting to a camera, like you know, Casey Nice yeah, that style. Yeah, yeah. I feel a right idiot. Whack my lid on with a camera and a mic, and I could do that no problem. It's like I often think about this, Casey Nice that. If you don't know who Casey Nice that is, folks, get on YouTube and just <laughs> search it. He's the godfather of vlogging, basically. But he is, he wears these sunglasses. Mm -hmm. all the time indoors outdoors he's one of them he's always got his sunglasses on but i get that it's like a little protective shield yeah, isn't it yeah. and it's, you put them on and you can just chat away no problem you don't need to worry about what people think for me the thing that's helped me a bit is just telling myself this is my job yeah this is what i'm being yeah. paid to do so just get on with it yeah and stop like and it's much more accepted these days because everybody's got their phone out chatting away to their yeah, phone, haven't they? Like, yeah. Even if you go back to 2015, 2016, 17, people weren't doing that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's the whole it, talking to AirPods. Yeah. Joe, the amount of times you turn around because you think someone's talking, you're like, eh? no? Yeah. <laughs> oh God, I'm guilty for that. Like I, I walk my dog morning and night and I've normally got my earpods in either yeah. listening to a podcast or music or yeah, my brother phones or something. And you're, you're walking along, chatting away, having a conversation and you get that. People going, morning, hi, how are you? And you're like, I'm on the phone. Yeah. 
<laughs> I mean, this, these whole Apple Vision thing, that's no, another oh, level wow. now, isn't it? What do you think about all this? Well, I, the only thing I've seen of them, really, was a YouTube video popped up of some cops in America arresting someone mm -hmm. and then someone walking past wearing them and the coppers and the person getting arrested all turned around and were like... <laughs> Then, this? Do you remember back in the day? Remember the old the hands-free Bluetooth kits that you used to get for your phone? Yeah. That all the mini cab drivers used to wear. The thing that used to clunk on the side of your head. Yeah. You used to look at people like that and think, what a lunatic. Mm. Now, now everyone does it, don't they? Yeah. Well, maybe not wear them, but you know, now we've got AirPods and all this sort of stuff. Well, it's changing. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know how it's going to be, man. Like, Rogan. Rogan's always talking about Elon Musk's working on this thing, isn't he? Where they're going to they're going to implant a chip into your brain, which yeah. will effectively just, it'll take away the need to hold a phone. So you'll be able to think, you'll be able to understand what somebody is saying without them actually talking. You'll communicate telepathically through this chip, like via Wi-Fi. Mm. You'll be able to make phone calls via that and chat without actually talking. It, I mean, it sounds so far-fetched, yeah. but I mean, <laughs> We, we've got computers in our phones now and in our watches, so... See, that's one of the things that makes me laugh as well, because do you remember they were going to bring out an ID card that you had to carry? Oh, yeah, yeah. And there was a vote, and everyone was like, oh, I'm not having that, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. the surveillance yeah. state and all that. <laughs> and now it's like everyone's got mobile phones yeah. and has your bank details, everything. has everything on yeah, it. Yeah, you know. yeah. Yeah, so I, I, the pushback I got when I, I had some dash cams, in all for a sponsor of the, the Teapot channel, so I had dash cams on my bikes and the pushback from some people is, you know, they're just going to know exactly what I'm doing and when I'm doing it and what speed I'm doing. And I was like, well, they know that anyway from your phone. Like, mm. if they really want to know, they can just read your phone. Yeah. So, anyway, never mind. <laughs> We're not going down that No, avenue. no, no, yeah. That's a whole can of worms. <laughs> um, what else can we say about this lid, man? Do you have a favourite part? Um, I think, for me, I, I like the thistle. Yeah. Um, the colours, just how it came out, I, I liked. Yeah, it's striking, isn't it? It's striking, but it also, you could you could easily miss that thistle, I think. Yeah. Obviously, certainly. Because it's so big, it yeah. goes right over the top. Yeah, unless I've got my head down looking at you like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think on a smaller detail element, I like the world map being part of a breaking tarmac. Yeah. That's clever, the way you transition between the two through it the map. It took a little bit of... Joe, because obviously off the side of the Americas and you're trying to create another section that's cracking yeah. and becoming that. Yeah. So that was the... I just picked that up as you bit. said it. It was like, oh, I can see what he's done there. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Man, it's awesome. <laughs> I'm just going to end up... I'm going to end up just sitting, looking at this, picking up all the different bits. Yeah, all, all these different signs here. I love how you're saying how they tell a different story. I love all that. Wuha Ranch, the road sign. Yeah, you can pretty much read the story from that. What's that mean then? Stat, stat San Shorij. I've got a funny feeling that is um, nationals. <laughs> really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what language? I have no idea. It I can't remember. I think it was... Is it Norwegian, maybe? Yeah, it looks sort of Scandinavian-y, doesn't it? Does anyone anyone tell us what that means at the top there? Yeah, you're going to have to Google them. <laughs> yeah. They were right, I did check them. <laughs> yeah. Bacon and eggs times two or it's something. It's been three years it? making this. I can't, I can't remember which was which. Man, I love it. I love it. I remember you saying, you probably, you know, I don't know if you're going to want to wear it or not. And I did think to myself, no, it's, it's going to have to just sit and be like a showpiece. Then I thought, no, I've got to wear it. You've got to wear it. I just hope I don't end up going down the road. I hope I don't do a, a um, pug wash. That, pug wash. The thing is, though, it's... For, Joe, first of all, it is a helmet to protect your head. Yeah. That's its job. The way it looks is just decoration. Yeah. So I, I get that some people buy them and put them in cabinets. There's plenty of helmet collectors I know who've bought helmets that don't even fit them because they picked them up cheap because it's an extra small but they only want it mm. Joe to go into a cabinet anyway so oh, yeah. um, but then there's people who phone me up and go oh you know just come off and smash my helmet I'm gutted I'm like well how are you are you alright mm -hmm. yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Save me. <laughs> well then did it's job didn't it yeah. you know, it doesn't matter that it's got a scuff on it so and I suppose you're never going to get no two, uh, two the same are they because even well, even if they are um, the same design 
I'm sure, because these are all done by hand, aren't they? Yeah, so they're all yeah. going to turn out differently. Well, like I say, in all the years, I've done, not really done much in the way of reps. Yeah. There was, um, this, this was actually, that was supposed to be a rep of a Hutchinson lid. Mm -hmm. So back when I did Ian Hutchinson's helmets, these are my two. Yep. This is basically being retired now, because that's five years of use, I think. Is it five years of use or four years of use? Um, so this got then, I did this this year, which was nice to have time to do my own lid again. Yeah, yeah. Um, but this was when I was doing Ian Hutchinson's and he'd, he he wanted to do um, some replicas that he sold himself. So he got onto me and he was like, I want to do 13 replicas. Wow. Um, let the customer pick the colour. So there'll be a red option, a yellow option, blue, this that, and the other. And I had a guy working with me at the time, and I basically said, "Should we do it? You know, you do the, all this element to it, and I'll pay you for doing that part." Yeah. So he was going to do all the masking out. I was going to do the spray in. So he had basically a, a cut in it. Um, I think we got up to, to eleven, and I had two more left to do, and I did not have time to do them. And I phoned up Ian, and I went, "Joe, those last two reps that you want doing, how about I buy the helmets off you?" <laughs> So I ended up, that's an Ian Hutchinson rep that never got repped. Right. So then I was like, right, I, one I gave to my brother um, and one I was going to do my own. And I was painting for Michael Dunlop at the time and he'd just done, he'd just won a senior TT. Mm. And it was the first time I'd had one of my helmets win a senior. Oh, wow. So Dean Harrison was the first rider to win a TT in one of my helmets. Yeah. And Michael Dunlop was the first person to win a senior yeah, in yeah. one of my helmets. So I phoned up Michael and I said, look, you know, I've got this helmet. I'd like to do a rep for myself. And he said, no. Really? Yeah. And he, I, I knew he was... Michael Michael is a really nice guy. Mm -hmm. Really nice guy. Um, but he's got a way about him. Mm -hmm. So the previous painter, <laughs> got away about him. when he, when he, uh, the previous painter used to work with him before I worked with him, warned me, he went, well, he didn't warn me because I don't think he knew he was coming to me at the time, but he, he was say, saying about his interactions mm. with Michael. And he said, he called, he said, uh, he phoned me up, he goes, listen, boy. And he said, I'm old, old enough to be his dad. And he calls me boy. Wow. So then when it, when he got <laughs> transferred over to me and I was expecting the same and he, if he went all right boss <laughs> and i was like well this is a good start yeah, yeah. i'm getting called boss and the previous paints got called boy so that was definitely a, a a switch and i knew he was a bit particular about his helmets and we uh, joe we had a bit of a trust and understanding on mm. reps joe i would not do a rep type mm. thing monster energy cannot put a monster energy on anything the only people who seem to get away with putting monster energy on helmets who aren't a sponsored rider or whatever are the ones who are f flying under the radar so mm. a, a no name painter who's just doing little bits yeah 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 fine if you've got anything about you and you put monster on a helmet you're going to get sued basically because yeah. it's Rage the brand thing and, yeah, yeah. so I knew monster would be funny and I'd have to ask permission to have the monster on if I wanted to do the rep mm. Michael owns the the bull logo on the back Aye. so that I had to have permission for the back but the rest of the design technically I could have that was kind of my design. Yeah. So I could have maybe done that. But I asked permission because it's only right. So I phoned him up. I said, look, you know, would, would you be all right if I do myself rep? And he said, no. And he said, look, you know, there's people who have offered to sponsor him uh -huh. a lot of money, but on the condition they have a helmet. Uh -huh. And he says, I don't do replicas. You know, and, and even to the point Fair where point. when he's done a TT, he takes his helmets that he's done the TT and they, with flies and everything, they get retired, mm. and then he'll get a new one out and do the rest of the season in something else. Um, wow. So he's he's quite a a stickler for that. Um, so yeah, he, then I was kind of at a loss. I was a bit like, well, what do I do rep wise, mm -hmm. or what do I do for myself, Joe? It's like someone said to me the other day, would I have a tattoo? And I'm like, well, no, because I can't even decide what to paint on my own <laughs> crush helmet. If I had a tattoo, it'd last a week before I looked at it and went. Oh, I should have probably done yeah. something else. Oh, you know? yeah, yeah. So, um, I know that feeling. <laughs> Jesus, this fucking yeah. thing. So then, um, yeah, I was a bit like, oh, what do I do? And I, I remember thinking, well, I'll just, 
you know, you go through a defiant moment where you're like, well, I'll just do it anyway and I'll, I won't put the bull on, I'll write no bull yeah, yeah. or something. And I thought, no, it'll upset Mike, I won't do that. Never then, burn your bridges. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So then my brother, I was chatting with my brother and he went, you did that helmet for Lee Johnson for the Mugen when he was riding the Mugen. I went, yeah, yeah. And he went, well, you had that picture of honda Sam, the owner of Honda, holding a helmet you You've painted done. with a massive grin on your face. So that's how, that was it. I was like, yeah, okay, so that, that's how that got done. But if I'm right in remembering, I've nicked the, the collar out of this. Here we go. So if I take this out of here. Oh no, it was 15. What? IH 15. Oh wow. Ian Hutchinson wrapped yeah, number yeah, 15 yeah, yeah. it was supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how that one. That's a nice design that as well. I didn't know Hutchie was a bro beard sponsor. No, that was Lee's. Oh, Lee, Lee Johnson's. Lee's. Yeah, yeah. Of course, of course, yeah, you just said, yeah. Yeah. So that's how that it was originally going to be a Hutchie rep, and then I bought it as a as a unfinished one. And yeah, and then did, did my own thing. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. So you're an RI man. Only by chance, really. I, the, the thing I the thing with a rye that I, you do kind of or I feel is they're just solid. Hmm. They're really solid. They're a little bit heavy hmm. normally. I've seen, I've crashed in the other Lee Johnson rep that's out there. I crashed in that, headbutted the floor. Yeah. And I couldn't have told you where I headbutted it. I actually thought I'd smashed the back of my head. I thought I'd gone backwards. And I'd actually foreheaded it. Wow. Yeah, and just was like, yeah. Flipping out. So, yeah, not, I wouldn't say if I was going shopping for a helmet, I'd be like, I've got to have a Rai. I only wear a Rai. Mm. Just by chance, it seems to be always a ride that I'm in at the moment. Yeah. But I mean, like I've got, I've got 14 helmets. <laughs> so I've got a, an AGV AX9 over there, which I actually... I love the look of AGV. I love the look of that helmet. Yeah. But there's a few people in here who've worn them and Joe, it touched their ears yeah. funny, which is a personal thing. Yeah. And, but they don't like them because of that. Yeah. I think so, with me, it was, it, I felt it quite tight across my forehead yeah. same with the climb same with the uh, our eye as well mm -hmm. where well, we, we did the vid didn't we before we did the design phase of this where i got fitted for a, a lid yeah. and i genuinely i mean i've always worn shoes but i genuinely went there with an open mind and right whatever one fits properly and i like the look of that's the one we'll go with and um <laughs> it ended up being shoey again didn't it because <laughs> it's it's what fits isn't it yeah. i mean first of all it needs to fit and be yeah. comfy and then you're going to look at getting the safest you yeah. can afford with something you know, that, that does fit. Yeah, so, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and it's been a bit of a learning curve working here, Joe, and selling helmets. And Joe, you know, because between the social media, when, when events are on and some of the team go off elsewhere and I'll be on the shop floor. And I, I love the interaction. I love chatting with the customers. And you know, sometimes it's someone who follows us on social media, so they'll see our stuff. Um, but yeah, you, it's it's fascinating kind of how people go about what they spend the money on. Mm. You know, you'll get someone who'll ride like a 20 grand superbike and they want to buy the cheapest helmet. Some 50 quid blooming lid. And yeah, you just, see that all the time, don't you? But yeah, we, we quite often with new riders, we say, look, you know, spend as much as you can on your helmet. Yeah. Because you can always come back to, you'll, you'll buy more than one kit. You'll buy a waterproof jacket. You'll have yeah. a summer jacket. Yeah. You're going to buy other kit but your helmet, you're not as likely to come back and replace yeah. that so soon. So, yeah, I mean, I think when you've had when you've had a big off and really walloped your head, you, you realise the value of a good lid. Yeah, yeah I, you know, I've I've cracked a lid literally. Again, it was a shoey Xperit, original Xperit, mm -hmm. and I literally cracked it like someone taking an axe to it. And all right, I had concussion, but I was alive, you know. Yeah. And you, you shouldn't be should yeah. you, when you're yeah. taking that level of impact. So they certainly do the job. You get what you pay for, for sure. There is actually um, a, a train of thought where the fa Joe, the outer shell cracking and mm. failing actually absorbs a lot of the energy yeah. from the impact. Mm -hmm. So some helmets will, in a way, fail mm -hmm. to save you, but it's a one crash mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Some of the other helmets, so like a ride, do a, they go for a solid shell of the EPS does all of absorbing. The, the internal, yeah. internals, yeah. 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 Which you get, Joe, you know, I've chatted to racers who've worn Arise, worn Sharks, worn Showies, 
and they all seem to f they've all crashed in them mm -hmm. and they all know kind of how they perform and, and will favour one over the other yeah. and you do find as well that from road racers they like the, the arrive because the the chance of that shell failing right. is less you know, it's a very strong shell Yeah. and in a road situation where you could hit solid things <laughs> you don't want it to crack um, but then you know you get some circuit racers who they have multiple lids what they don't want is to get knocked out they want something that has a soft f thud to it right so different uh, manufacturers yeah, yeah work differently in the way they uh, yeah and uh, I, I had uh, Martin oh god I forgot Martin I do apologise I forgot your surname Martin from Helmet in Inspection Company mm -hmm. um, he came on because I don't know if you know about them but they have this business folks where say say you knock your lid off your bike and it hits the ground a lot of the time when you hear that thud that crack you think oh god that's my lid done imagine you just spent five six seven eight hundred quid on a lid and the first thing you do is you drop it off the bike well you can send it for, for about like 30 40 quid is what you pay to helmet inspection they take the lid and they carry out assessment of the structural integrity of the lid and they can tell you whether or not it's done or whether or not not that thing's fine for you to wear now so you know if you're investing in a substantial lid what, another 35 40 quid it's well worth forking that out rather than going spending another six seven eight hundred quid on another lid isn't it Talking of dropping helmets. <laughs> <laughs> Talking of dropping helmets. Um, Joe, trying to think up things to do for the My Moto YouTube channel and stuff. Yep. And I was like, oh, we should do a video on. Because there's so much mixed messaging about dropping a helmet. Is yeah. it fine? Is it not fine? If you're, if you're not wearing it so it's not got any weight in it, it's fine. It's, there's a lot of mixed kind of messaging. So I was like, well, we should do a, a video about it. I said, we had a, an old helmet there that was, it looked like one that had just been released. It, the colours were very similar. I said to the boss, um, we could almost like get people's reaction because mm -hmm. the, the sound of a helmet hitting the floor is one of those, it kind of goes through you a bit. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like when you dispatch a fish. You, know, you whack them over the <laughs> head. It's just like a, a sudden, yeah. oh, God, terminal oh, thing. Yeah. yeah, the hollow kind of thump of yeah. a helmet hitting the floor. So, um, especially ones that have been custom painted. Uh, <laughs> I'm holding on it. I'm holding. I'm not going to drop it. So I, I said, oh, well, we could do something where we kind of try and capture people's reactions and then we'll do a little bit of information about mm. what you do if you drop a helmet. Anyway, he said, oh, well, you're going to have to do that somewhere where there's plenty of bikers where you're going to be able to catch reactions. He went, you can go and do it at Matlock. And I was like, there's a lot of people in Matlock. Matlock Bath. In Matlock Bath. Yeah, yeah. There's going to be a lot of bikes down there. So, right, okay. I mean, I'm getting paid to ride a bike, <laughs> talk into a camera, go to Matlock. I'm getting paid to do it. So I can't. Yeah. Joey's ace. And I get down to the Matlock and I park the bike up. And I'm like, I actually, I, I ended up just parking outside Matlock and doing the switch because I thought I can't risk someone seeing what I'm up to. Yeah, yeah. So I put the good helmet in the top box, put this old one on, rode into the town. Anyway, I pull in, and right beside me, this other guy pulls straight up alongside me. I thought, this is going to be quick. Mm. I've got someone here straight away. So I take the helmet off, and I put it on the tank. And I put it on the edge as much as I can. And I'm chatting with this guy, and he's a really nice guy. And oh, oh, I'm going to have to do oh, this. No. So I'm, I'm, knocking the bike. I'm, I'm knocking the bike with my thigh. And I can see the helmet going like this. Yeah. And I'm like, it's going to go, it's going to go. And I've got the 360 camera on, so yeah, I can yeah. catch it all. Anyway, it just starts to slide and he catches it. <laughs> I was like, no. <laughs> so then I was like, oh, cheers. Nearly nearly dropped out yeah, yeah. like it was like the real helmet. So cheers, nearly dropped it. Thanks for saving that. And I went off into town, got a, cu a cup of tea and I phoned my boss and I went, I don't think I can do this. <laughs> and he went, you're doing it. This is, Joe, I'm telling you now, you've got to do it. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, all oh, right, okay. So I I stood back and I'm looking at the bikes and everyone around and I'm weighing it up and it Joe you know, like almost geeing up to doing it again yeah, yeah, and he's yeah. like Who's gonna be my mark? Who, yeah, <laughs> who am I gonna do this with? And I I ended up going over to the bike and I thought I'll hook it on the handlebar, the typical kind of Yeah. Hooked it on the handlebar. And I'm kind of messing around with the bike. 
hoping someone's going to fall into the trap because yeah. I, I can't target someone. It's almost cruel. Anyway, there's a guy sat there and it turns out after meeting him, he's actually called Orms Moto, I think he's called on Instagram. Right. And he does loads of really cool Instagrams around his triumph. But he comes over and he starts asking me about the 360 camera. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah it's really good. Dad. It's great. And as he's walking around, I thought, I've got to do it. <laughs> got to do it now. And I had to kind of put my hand on the handlebar and just kind of give it a little yeah, yeah. knock to get the helmet yeah. to go. And uh, yeah, and you can see him go, what? I got, <laughs> kind of got the reaction and everything. But cause that, was the, that was the first kind of reality check of what I'm going to potentially have to do in this job. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, you've got to do it. It's your job. <laughs> just get on with it. How are you finding it then? How are you finding it being like the, the marketing social guy behind the, the brand? <sighs> I love the community. Mm -hmm. So I love meeting customers, then watching the videos, leaving a comment. Yeah. Because the thing that we're really as a shop focused on is the community element and getting what's right for the customer. Yeah. Not it's not about quick sales. It's not about just discount, discount, discount. It's about service mm -hmm. quality. Yeah. And and we find that we end up with people who, I mean, we do look after our customers really well. And I think the channel and the social media is building on that, really. Mm -hmm. um, it's the interaction with them when they're not here buying stuff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you, so, you want to be the first port of call. When someone goes, oh, I could do with some new boots or new something, you, you, the, the first port of call you want is you guys, isn't yeah, it? Because you've got that uh, community relationship already yeah. established. Yeah, get But that. also, like, someone, if someone came and bought something even if they didn't get it from here you know if they've got something they're one of our customers and they go on our youtube channel and go leave a comment like oh could you do something on how to fit we actually had one where said, can you do a video on how to fit a comms yeah right mm -hmm. so we've done one mm -hmm. i filmed it i've just got to do the editing and put it up um and it's really kind of to have that to and fro in you've got some way they can contact us and ask for advice and we can build stuff around them. Yeah. They tell us what they want to see and we'll do it. So mm -hmm. that's the bit that we want to kind of build on. And we're looking at what's around, Joe. We're probably aiming a little bit at kind of the Revzilla style, but for the UK. Yeah, yeah, great. So there is there is product stuff in there. There's product reviews. Do, do you talk at 86,000 miles an hour as well? <laughs> try not to. <laughs> I, wa I waffle and stutter and have to <laughs> cut same. loads of nonsense out. Yeah, why well, use three words when you can use 12? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and call things like dual carriageways, motorways, because you just <laughs> your brain's not quite connecting yeah, with yeah, the yeah. dots. But, um, yeah, so there's a bit of product stuff, tutorial stuff, and then interest. So we've got some bike review stuff that we're building on because people are interested in it. Mm -hmm. But we, we are a motorcycle clothing and... Shop. Is that specifically for my Moto Manchester then, or do you do you, like do you have channels and accounts for all the different? Because you got my Moto Manchester, Derby, and Leeds. And Leeds, and you... all have got a Instagram, and all have got a Facebook. Right. But the YouTube is a central generic for the brand. Yeah. yeah so we've just done a video that went on yesterday, which is a finally managed to get Teresa from Derbyshire Star to go on camera, and she's given us a tour of the shop. But that's the other thing you find that people don't always want to be on camera. No, no, it's no. It's so difficult to yeah. get someone to want to do it. I see it on my tours. You know, we go away on tour and stuff, and people come touring with me because they've seen the vids and they mm. like the crack. But when you put a camera in someone's face and it's then like, go, right, come on in, say something, be funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> people yeah. are just like, ooh. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, but I mean, it's new challenges. I yeah. like the helmet painting was a challenge when I started that, and little did I know where it was going to end up. Yeah. And it, like again with the helmet painting people were saying like well, do you not miss it I don't I didn't I couldn't go any further mm -hmm. I'd done senior winners at the TT yeah I'd done a Moto2 there's no way I was going to get into the MotoGP grid because really? it was that there's some kind of a deal between ah, right. or I believe there's some kind of a deal between Dorna and a, a few of the helmet painters that basically do all of them but I'd done Tammy McKenzie and Jake Dixon when they were in Moto2 so I ticked mm -hmm. that box I'd done did I do Moto3 wild cards in Moto3 pretty much all the British Championship stuff mm. so I'd done everything you did Tom Sykes as well didn't Sykes, you Sykes McGuinness yeah. 
to to be honest, painting Michael Dunlops was. I remember going and watching Joey Dunlop at the Southern One Hundred when yeah, I was a yeah, kid, and yeah. to then paint Michael Dunlop's helmet, and and that was a little bit of like because I knew my dad would be proud of me doing mm. that to have done a Dunlop's helmet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, there was, and this is just new challenges now. Mm. Yeah, where I kind of want to build the marketing as much as I can for this, and mm. and get a really good community and work with YouTubers and other influencers mm. and. Let's see what, what we can it's, make of it. It's quite an exciting um, environment to be in now, isn't it? Mm. In the, on the socials and in bikes, because like bikes have notoriously been a very, very small niche market and a, an even smaller niche market of social media, but it's definitely grown massively. And mm -hmm. I, I, like you definitely notice there's a much younger crowd coming in now. And there's a, I used to say there was a, I, I would say there's, there's a lot of, of women in biking now to the extent where as a, as a bloke, it doesn't, it doesn't strike me as being anything out of the ordinary anymore. You know, it's just, yeah. you, you're even going back five, six years ago, if you saw a couple of lassies on bikes, it was like, oh, wow, mm -hmm. cool. Wow, don't often see that. Now it's just normal, isn't it? Yeah. Well, so, certainly it seems to be for me, there's so many, um, so many more people into biking now. It's and, definitely growing, isn't it? Yeah. With, the, with the lady bikers and, but I, I, you, when you look at the algorithms and the the uh, data that you see back, and yeah. the numbers are like I think on our YouTube channel it's something like not even ten percent. Oh yeah, yeah. So it's it's ninety eight percent. Yeah, if you men, get over like you know? three four percent female audience, you're doing really well. Yeah. Like, but myself, uh, TMF, Lamb Chops, Rich, we used to do like trumps on our on our stats, yeah. and it was like. Okay, what's your what's your percentage female audience? And it was like one point two, point eight, and then I think I think Rich always used to get like three or four percent Richie Vida because you know yeah he appeals to them <laughs> yeah. And then there was there was one month where I think I had like seven percent, and it was like yes, screw in there. <laughs> Just call me Brad. <laughs> I think I'm about point four. Should we play now. Trumps today? <laughs> yeah. Well, I've got my seven percent. <laughs> yeah. But you see, it, you see it in the way the content is now with social media. Like everyone has upped their game massively. <laughs> unless I'm missing something. Unless it's like, I don't know, like some AI app out there that yeah. does it. But like you look at social media content now, and you're like, okay, that's really good. How have you done that? <laughs> I, I still don't. I mean, it's it's. You can't really kind of get your head around it when mm. you look at the the size of our channel. We've got now 1,700 subs. Mm -hmm. It's a young channel. Mm -hmm. I did a video on a Kawasaki that was about just, a, I think it was about 11 months ago, 10 months ago. Um, we did it. it. They let us basically have any bike and I said, well, we'll start with a 125 because we did a post on a 125 and it just seemed to get traction. I think it's yeah. that young yeah, it is. biker input. Yep. Um, so got the 125. Kawasaki shared it on their Facebook and it bumped up to about 14,000 views and we were like wow this mm. is this is doing good it's a young channel mm -hmm. very like first bite review and then it crept up to about 25 24 25,000 then it gets to November and went up to 144,000 gee whiz in the space of like a couple <laughs> of months a month and a half maybe a month it just went and that, I don't know, is, is that on YouTube? Yeah. yeah. Wow. So we've got we've got 1,700 subs and a video mm. that's done 144,000 yeah, yeah. views. Yeah. Um, it's converting them though, isn't it? It's converting those views into subs. Yeah. 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 Which I'm learning. I'm learning to get. It's not easy. Like, subscribe. Oh yeah. Yeah. And whilst we're here, like, subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like the 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 podcast side of things, we were chatting about this, and everyone everyone that comes on always asks, you know, like oh. Because they look at the YouTube vid mm -hmm. and it's got, you know, a couple of hundred views maybe. Or so there's a few out there that are in the thousands, but not many. And, um, you know, folk are always quite surprised, I think. But the, the audio side of it seems to do so much better. Mm -hmm. It does like 10, 15 odd thousand downloads. But the video just doesn't. And trying to, trying to get people, even across from my Teapot channel, trying to get them across... You know, there's ninety odd thousand of them. So if you could just get, you know, I don't know, geez, what's one percent of ninety thousand? What's that? Nine hundred. Yeah. If I could just get nine hundred people across, it'll bump the subs up yeah. and bump the views up. But 
I, I think you either like long form content or you don't really. Mm. So yeah, if I mean, you're watching this and you haven't subscribed, please do. <laughs> I'll, I'll watch or not even watch. I I'm very much kind of YouTube focused mm -hmm. more. So I'll like I said, I'll listen to a podcast via YouTube yeah. and I'll just stick it on the side playing yeah. and listen to you chatting. Um, but I'll do the same with a moto vlog. I'll because I, when I was doing the helmets, I'd be at a desk yeah. masking stuff out, yeah. and I'd have this is how I got into moto vlogging was because I'd have a moto vlogger playing on YouTube on the computer, and you just look up when something interesting happens. Mm -hmm. So when someone flies across a roundabout because they've got it wrong, <laughs> something like that, and you do that, skip back and watch that, and <laughs> and then you carry on masking and you're listening to it. So yeah. I kind of I've listened to YouTube stuff almost like a vlog anyway yeah yeah, yeah. or like a, a podcast anyway but yeah it's, I've never really listened to much in a way of podcasts on Spotify right not much yeah I, I, that's probably all I do now really I don't often watch YouTube anymore it's mostly I'm either listening to audio I've got into audio books so I'm either listening to an audio book or a podcast you know and I only really do that when I'm out walking the dog uh -huh. or if I'm doing like you know the accounts or something like that in the yeah. office you know obviously i can't i can't do that when i'm editing vids but if i'm doing stuff like that yeah i'll just have i'll just have other stuff on in the background are you one of these youtubers who edits it uploads it never goes back to it watches it yeah you know i never and never yeah because i, I sit and i'll watch you know like a, a a vid will take me if it's a tour vid that could maybe take me five six days to to edit mm -hmm. and in that time geez I couldn't even tell you how many times I've watched the, 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 the content. But then I suppose I, I, I only do the last bits, like a little bit of tweaking on colours, uh, adding all the, like the lower thirds, the text and all that sort of stuff. Um, and any tweaks to audio, I do that like in the last run, yeah. more or less. And I have been guilty of, of not picking up you know, that last little tweak that you might do to the audio might be fine for 99.9% .9 of the vid, but there could be one bit where it all distorts or you can't hear what's being said just for whatever reason. And yeah, I've, I've missed that a couple of times. Mm -hmm. That's when you rely on people that are watching it to, to kind of go, oh, there's a, there's a mistake there, or that was shit. It's such and such, this happened. You're like, ah, oh, bugger. Yeah. But it's not like with a, with a podcast, with an audio podcast, you can... You know, you could re-render the audio and you can replace the audio file in that, that podcast episode and it doesn't delete any of your analytics. Mm -hmm. So you, you still have the same amount of downloads and stuff. You're just changing the source file, which is a bit naughty, I suppose, in a way, because you could replace it with something totally different, couldn't yeah. you? Yeah. But with YouTube, you can't do that. No. So if, if you make a mistake in a vid, you have to re-upload and you lose, yeah. you know, all the, the analytics. Yeah. So you can, you can cut can't you? you can splice a little bit out i don't know if you can do that anymore you used to you, be able to you can you can do that now can you i only know because i did it <laughs> all recently. right okay but it won't do a transition it just literally cut cut yeah, so it's but hard. It, hmm. it could do with some more the thing that irritates me a bit with youtube is when and i, I even had it with the paint nation stuff where youtube get, has a library of music that you can use yeah and i put one of their tunes on then uploaded yeah and then got a monetize, a strike on it, a copyright really? strike. And then I was like, that was one of their tunes. But did you give credit? You have to give, there's certain conditions that you have to do. You have oh, to give credit know. in the descriptions and stuff. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So anyway, I, but I wish they could do it where you could overlay an audio in uh, YouTube. And then if there's something happens with that, change it. you can switch it out. Yeah. So all you have to do is upload a, a vocal mm -hmm. and then all the, other bits can be added yeah, yeah, yeah. in editing. but And we're also sponsored by the Influencer Store. Now I've got some blurb to read out for them. The Influencer Store helps you build your brand, big or small, providing you with a solution and apparel. We help you to increase your fan base while supporting you with starting your own influencer clothing line with nothing more than just an idea and a design and there are no hidden costs. For more info, come check us out at theinfluencerstore.co.uk or drop us an email at online at influencerstore.co.uk for more information. Now, all my current merch over at teapot1.com, that is all handled by Roger and Charlotte and their family over at the Influencer Store. So thank you for all your support. And lastly, a big shout out to all of you who are either watching a podcast or listening just now on your platform of choice. If you can like, 
share with your mates, tell people about the podcast and help spread the word. That really does help. And if you're listening on things like Apple Podcasts or Spotify, if you can follow and leave a review or rating, five star is preferable, of course, then that would be absolutely fan dabby All right, folks, let's get back to the podcast. Yeah, it is annoying, isn't it? I thought, so they used to have a little, uh, a basic editor in YouTube, but I thought that had gone. So that's still there, it's isn't still it? still there. Yeah, God, I'll have to try and find that. That would have helped a couple See, of the, times. <laughs> I watched the like YouTuber weekly updates. And, oh yeah, yeah. Joe, what's new? How the algorithms changed? I watch. I do watch my own videos back. Mm. Not so much the, the paintwork ones because that was literally just time lapse. But because we're trying to make what we're doing now better. Yeah. Joe, I've gone when that Kawasaki video spiked. I've gone back to it and I've watched it again and gone, what, what's worked with this? Yeah. Because something's right. But, yeah. Um, I mean, for me, I think it was doing something that you wouldn't normally do is interesting, mm. which I was chatting with Richie the other day and he, he was like, oh, I hate how you have to kind of do something daft to kind of get the views. He says, I'm not, I'm not bowing to that. Yeah. Type thing. It's, Where, it's like tabloid blooming. It is, it is. Isn't it? It's just clickbaity and, shite, but that's what and that, that's views. Like you look at the 125 video we did and it was... Um, 125cc, 125 miles flat out. Mm. That's the, the thumbnail. Yeah. And it, it is it that, that they're clicking on? But then in reality, we did actually, I ended up doing about 230 miles on it. Mm. And most of it was on the motorway yeah. flat, flat out. Yeah. So. Thumbnails are everything. Thumbnails are, are, are absolutely everything. I, I'm even, I'm looking at the moment of, of bringing somebody in like professionally to do the thumbnails just because that they mean everything now. Yeah. You know, maybe not so much with an established audience. Is that stopped? Oh, shit. <laughs> when did that stop? Right, sorry about <laughs> that, folks. Uh, something happened with this main camera. Uh, we've had this one running, so you hopefully won't have missed anything. Um, what were we talking about? So you, well, we were saying the um, I, about the thumbnails. I think the, yes. the th your initial catch is the thumbnail. Oh, I, then the description. Yeah, the title. And then your first 30 seconds in the... Yeah. And then once you pass that, yeah. you've potentially got a viewer for the long yeah. haul. When you look at your... We'll get a bit geeky here, folks. When you look at your audience retention, is it like a ski jump? My, mine, it starts at 100, and in that opening sort of 10 seconds, it just goes... Poof, and it'll either drop to like 60 and then level out. Or it'll drop to like 30, 25, 40, whatever it is. And then it tends to level out after a couple of days. Ours will generally go down to 30% after about 40 seconds. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting past the 30 second point mm -hmm. at least. But I chapter everything. So I get spikes back up to 50, 60s through. where people are skipping to yeah, the bits they want to see. Yeah. Um, what I found that was really interesting was certain videos so for instance bike reviews and things the kawasaki one broke the trend a bit mm. but the others get a hump and then level off mm -hmm. whereas anything tutorial based so how to change a visor just climbs and climbs and climbs and keeps getting more and more as it goes the older it gets oh you the mean quicker view, it's going views yeah. you mean yeah, because they're like tutorial stuff is um, they call it like evergreen content. Mm. So that's what people just could slow come back. Burns yeah, they constantly. could come back in five years time and yeah. you know just search how to how mm -hmm. to change your visor and your vid will get higher and higher and higher in those rankings, won't it? The more views and engagement yeah. and stuff it gets. Yeah. yeah. So that was one of the when the the new Arai Tom X Five, which we got there. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, when that came out and. There was a European launch and there was a, I think ABR magazine and Bennett's had been over to Japan for their launch. Uh -huh. So we were way down, way down the rankings by the time we got it. Rich, we managed to get one to Richie uh -huh. to do a, a test ride. So by the time one ends up in the shop where I can get it, it's way later. And I said to Phil, the boss, I said, um, we, we, we do a review on this, it's missed the boat. You've missed the boat, yeah. So, I was like, I'm going to take this thing to bits. <laughs> and I just used the helmet stripping knowledge and just took it to bits, did loads of close-ups, because oh. there will be now people buying them going, how do I change my visor? How do yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. take the peak off? Can I adjust the peak? And yep. So there's a video now with all that, and that's nice. now 
picking up nicely. So that's what you need to do. You need to. Everyone says that, don't they? Niche down. Mm -hmm. So this is already quite a niche um, market, being bikes. But then clothing's another niche. And then if you even niche further down, like you just said there, of how do you actually change the visor? How do you change the liner? Really yeah. niche down. You you ascertain your your dominance in terms of your knowledge base for for the topic that you're co you're covering. You become that point where people go, I need to know about how do I change a visor? Mm -hmm. Ah, well, you know, my motto, their channel, they've always got stuff like this. They've been doing it for ages. Boom, and you become the the uh, the like Bible the, yeah. for that. That yeah. topic, yeah. Which would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> if we Mike, give me that. Mine's talking shit on a bike. <laughs> People enjoy it. S screaming woo ha. <laughs> Speaking of which, you got woo ha on here, haven't you? Yeah, woo ha woo ranch. ranch. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Do you know that I actually had to watch the videos again and go like, does he go yee ha? Does he go? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It was it was getting it right. Do you know what? I I normally limit, believe it or not, I limit the amount of like woo ha and different things that I say, I say stonking a lot and all that sort of stuff yeah hiya. yeah hi yeah I, <laughs> I, I I say all that but I limit it normally when I'm editing a vid I'll limit how much I say that just because I think you know I, I don't want to hack people off and it annoys me a lot of the time but my son's been editing the last sort of I don't know four or five vids he's done of mine the tour ones and from a son he's like no that's your thing so he chucks it chucks he's got he's got loads in and it started to hack me off so I'm like <laughs> I might have Did to curtail that. that often? Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, <laughs> give it a rest. Yeah, so I might have to watch, watch what, I, watch what I say in the future ones. <laughs> See, that's that's something I haven't got. It's like the the only thing I came up with was like the sign off of you know, ride safe basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah thanks for watching, ride safe. I had Guy Markham on. Do you know him from Instagram? He's the big guy that lives in a caravan in Devon. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And his thing is stay stay hydrated. That's that's just become his catchphrase. Just because he, he had a vid that went viral and he, he'd said... He'd said this. So I, I thought that had just stopped. Is that... That's recording. Oh, it's that flashing. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, folks. We've got two cameras going here that are both flashing and a phone that trying to monitor. Um, yeah, it's just that his, his one went viral, so that's now his catchphrase. Stay hydrated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, what you got planned for the rest of this year? So rest of the year... Uh, we've got loads of events that we're going to be doing. So we do some retail at different events. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be going to the ABR, hopefully, and running some retail there. Mm -hmm. So I might be on a stand there. We did see you last year, but you'd gone past by the time Phil spotted you. And then oh. you said to me, you went, Bruce has just gone past. And I was like... <laughs> it was busy, wasn't it? We were swamped. It we was swamped. busy last year. But that was the first time I'd ever been to ABR last yeah, year. Yeah. What do you think? Just an eye-opener. Mm -hmm. I came away from it going... How cheap can I get an an adventure bike for? Yeah, and yeah. I mean, there's things like I'd love to do that, but I, I wouldn't be able to work a retail st stand yeah. and do all the social media at the same time. It, yeah. It's almost too much. But um, yeah, that I came away from it thinking this is where the NEC was just slowly seemed to be dying off. Yeah. And then there's this great festival where there's entertainment and it, the social element yeah. to it all and it's not just carrying it's the best thing in biking and stuff. it's the best thing in biking for the, certainly for the UK mm. I think um, that's happened over the last well god knows how long yeah because like the NEC and the, the I mean the London shows it's so small now it's and the NEC is just there's nothing out of the ordinary there is there you know you go you go every year like I used to go and give talks and stuff on the um on the adventure zone but so i've been around the world you know don't know if you know that folks Have you? And, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah and it was just <laughs> samey and when when abr started you know when abr said they were doing the festival i gotta admit i i kind of thought to myself because they were talking about big numbers five thousand people initially mm. or something you think because the, the the overland scene the adventure scene in the bike world is it's very niche. It's very small, close knit, and yeah. and everyone was just like, "Oh, they're going to ruin it. How how are they going to do this?" Mm. So I, I didn't think it would be very good. And I've got to say, I went to the second year. I missed the first year. I went to the second year. I was blown away by it. It was, it was like, wow. This is this is amazing. And then last year, wow, last year was unreal. I've got it. I can't. I can't. I can't go this year. I've I've got. I think I let, I'm in between tours, so it's just I think I get back from one tour and then it's a week or two before I go away on another one, and I'm like, I can't 
you've got a balance time yeah. at home. I can't say it to the missus, oh, I'm away for another four days Just working. It. It's a great music festival. Yeah, but we've got <laughs> we've got the dog as well now. That's, uh, you know, you know, yeah. So it's can't. She's not really the type of dog I could take along to that because she should just anyone that's on a push bike anyone that's wearing a helmet anyone that's wearing a high vis jacket <laughs> she, she'll try and eat so yeah it wouldn't be a very relaxing couple of days yeah, yeah. but yeah it is good it is cracking really yeah. really good yeah so we're, we're doing that i think we're going to be over at the isle of man for the tt oh are you um silverstone for the gp uh-huh we actually met with richie the other day about being at wild bad again yeah, yeah. that was really good really personal mm -hmm. but that venue we got last year was oh, incredible i've missed it yeah I've, i haven't been to the new venue it looks pretty special i was the first to jump in the lake <laughs> last year did you go in the lake yeah, yeah. good lad <laughs> although these will say that i didn't i just basically paddled and got out but i was gonna say was it intentional uh to do because we went for setup so we were there a day before right. it all started sure. and the, i don't think the showers were on or there was showers were on but in one block but we didn't know it so it was a necessity for so it was like it was hot and sweaty and i was like <laughs> i'm getting in that lake it's got to be cleaner than what i am <laughs> so yeah i had a quick swim cooled off barbecue nice. but I, I reversed the van right up to the lake back door open bed in the back and it was just yeah it was perfect awesome yeah yeah i've got to miss that one as well this year got it sorry dickie um, yeah and also um Doing the NC500 end of April. Nice one. Which, is that my first tour? I don't know. Have you that never, might be my first tour. Have you never been away on a bike before? Well, we chatted about this the last yeah, time Yeah, we did, we on. did. And you, you were like, oh, you've got, we'll, got to get you out. And yeah. I ended up, so before COVID, my brother and my dad booked to go to the Isle of Man mm -hmm. for, to the Southern 100. And it got delayed and delayed. Then my dad got cancer and... In the July, um, after he was, so he had it for 10 months, nine months mm. by that point. And they were going to go and I, I was like, I, th I was a bit like, I need to go on this trip because this is potentially yeah. the last kind of thing with my dad. Mm. So um, I went to the Isle of Man for, I think it was five days, which I could kind of say that's touring. Mm. Oh it? God, yeah, absolutely. 100%. So, um but that was really good. Yeah, that was good. And then uh, I went to Anglesey on the 125 for a night and slept at Anglesey Circuit for one night on that 125, which, again, that was actually a... Even though it was one night away, was actually quite enjoyable in that. Uh, yeah. I was setting off on that thinking, I've got this whole idea of what I'm going to do, and I don't even know if this bike can do it because a 125 with camping gear on a motorway... And it was at 10,000 RPM for about three hours each way, <laughs> solid. Isn't it nuts what they put up with? <laughs> isn't it? It's incredible, but isn't it's, it? it? It's a brand new bike. It's, mm -hmm. It shouldn't. It should have, like, I mean, they test yeah. bed those engines like that, don't well, they? So you, you it think should so. just do yeah. it. <laughs> um, anyway, they, Kawasaki were fine with it. They obviously have a lot of confidence in the bikes. Yeah. And, yeah, it just proved it could do it. So that was good. I, mean, I did the, the round the UK on the uh, the Sinus 125. And same thing. I mean, it was literally like in the red for two, two and a bit, three days. <laughs> do you know what? I've quoted that to so many people mm. because I was like, well, <laughs> I, so my boss has bought a GS, huh? a 1250. Yeah, you tell me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's a great bike. I do like GSs, but I can't tell him that because <laughs> it, it is my duty to <laughs> nobody wants to see it it's your duty to kind of not be in a gs owner i've got to rip it a oh, little yeah, absolutely. bit absolutely i get that i understand that so there was a there was a whole like oh well <laughs> i remember when bruce rode one of these around the around the uk he only got to wales it broke down and that was sinis <laughs> 125 did a full lap <laughs> so many people have said that to me <laughs> so many yeah. people and you know you're starting to get that divide now amongst the you know the gs wallopers and that if you now like i now have the 1300 and people either love the 1300 or they fucking hate it yeah. there's a the divide literal, on that mic, oh there? my god yeah. Yeah. yeah it's almost like the there's there's gs gs haters amongst the gs brigade now for yeah. the 1300 the thing is oh, well. for me i probably would have I would have done what my boss did and got the 1250 because yeah. I had a Triumph T595 and it was a 97 one. It was mm. the first year they started making them and it was no end of 
problems. Mm. And it's, I think it was just because it was that first yeah. year. Yeah, it's the first so year you're going to get that. I'd have the 1300, but I'd probably wait yeah, yeah. three years yeah. in, two, three years in maybe, and just wait until yeah. all those little niggles are... All I've had, all I've had so far was uh, starting issues, which was a starter relay. They've changed that. I had a couple of, I had it did it twice after that was done a few days later, but it's not done it since. <laughs> it's been spot on, um, and that's I think that's the only issue I've had mechanically with the bike. There's a few things I don't, a few things I don't like about the styling of it, but. It is rapid. It is seriously quick. You, you you forget how quick it is until you jump on something else and ride something. Mm. And then you get back on that and you're just like, a GS shouldn't be like this. No, yeah. It is rapid. I didn't realise how, I mean, looked at the press shots and it looked like the old GS with a load of plastics on it. Mm. And then it was only when I saw one in person that you realised that the subframe is all now Total a new cast bike. piece. It's Everything not, is new. It's not the old tubular no. bike with panels. It's a completely new... Yeah. I think the only thing that's the same is the TFT, to a degree. But even the D, even the TFT is slightly different, I think, compared to the twelve fifty. There's a slight difference, maybe a different size. But everything else is new. It's, it's a new bike. Question for you. Go on then. Because you mentioned TFT, I was oh. having a debate the other day. What is better looking, a TFT, or something analog that's got style like the old nine one six clocks? Ooh. I think it depends on the bike. Do you not know think? Do you not know think? I tell you what. What <laughs> display I've really liked was the is the Indian ones. You've seen yeah. the Indian displays. So they're set up to look like classic uh, analog style, but yeah. they're they're all digital. The right. TFT touch. They almost like the digital watches with yeah. a fake kind yeah. of face. It's like. that kind of look. Yeah. But I just. I wasn't expecting it, so when I started when I started the bike up and it it had that, it was like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. And then you realise it's touch screen, and you're like, oh, this is Gucci. I, I was really impressed with the Indians until I rode one for like half an hour and then thought my back was going to break. <laughs> I was gutted because it was a really cool bike. Look where we've come from. Where, Joe, you, know, you had the nine one six like kind of clocks where everything's analog. Yeah. And then it was like the MV Augusta where the needle went round and back. Yeah, yeah. And you turned it on, it's like, yeah. Ooh. yeah. <laughs> What's this? Turn yeah. it on and off again. And now it'll play and YouTube to you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like, like a full <laughs> HD widescreen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where, where are we going to go with it? I've got, I've got this, um, I've got this head-up display thing now. They, they work with Kali Moto, but it's, it's just this little Perspex screen that flips down from your lid, covers one of your eyes, mm -hmm. and it gives you a head-up display of because it works with Kali, it's your head-up display of your sat-nav, basically, that's yeah. on there. But it'll, you know, it'll tell you your speed and all this sort of malarkey there. I've not used it yet. See, but I would love to get, because my background was when I went, well, when I was at uni, I was doing transport design. Uh -huh. And that's where the design with the helmet thing came in. I would love to be involved in the design and development of crash helmets. Because I think that there is more options for having ready to go mounts that will work for cameras. Mm. I mean, like I know Aero have actually surprised me and they've did that little plate that goes on the top so you can stick for your camera. GoPro mount on. Yeah. But who puts the camera on top of the helmet no, these days? No do one that, does. Though. So there needs to be a manufacturer out there who starts doing something where there's like a replaceable chin bit where you can yeah. slide it out and put yeah. a mount in. Or um, do you have like the head up display? Why aren't we got a flip down internal visor like mm. we get? It's digital and you can flip it down, see what you want to do and flip it back up when it's... There's been a couple annoyance. of lids. Yeah. There's, there's been a couple of lids uh, in development, mm. not not through the likes of RI or Shui, not through established brands, totally new brands. So that it's not only is it new technology, so it's like a haptic lid and it's got, it, it's got built-in sensors to yeah. tell you if people are behind or in front and it'll vibrate depending on that and it's got a head-up display giving everything that you need to know about your route and uh, you know your comm system, what music you're listening to, who's on the phone. You, know, you end up like a blooming Apache gunship <laughs> pilot, aren't you? But it's a, it is an unknown lid as mm. well. Yeah, and I think yeah. that's where they've gone too far. Yeah. This sort of stuff, I think, needs to be... Integrated introduced, into yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't think it's necessarily that the manufacturers who are there need to put that into the helmet. They just need to standardise how it's put in, yeah. So that 
the camera moves on in technology, but the mount's always going to be the same. Yeah. The intercom's going to move on, but the way it installs is always going to be the same. Yeah. Joe, you know, and, and just having that in there, I think intercoms could be, I know they do the integrated ones, but the, there's some that are actually really kind of flush and mm -hmm. low key, and I, I just think they could do more of that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. And it's like mesh technology is the, the big thing now, yeah. and it's great, it really is good. It doesn't all. It is not hundred percent for sure, but it is really good in terms of strength and how many people you can get connected and easy use. But you've either you've either got Senna or you've got Cardo, and you can't have those two working together in mesh. Yeah. You can connect Senna now to uh, Cardo, but it connects via Bluetooth, so yeah. it negates. You know, there was if there's only one or two of you, that's fine. But in a big group, you still can't you can't bring somebody in on Bluetooth in a big group unless they are constantly, like if, if I bring you into the group by bridging you to me, then you literally need to stay behind or in front of me yeah. the whole time. As soon as it drops out, yeah. you're out. Yeah, you've gone. Yeah. There is, um, there was an announcement last year that three of the big manufacturers, it was Cardo, Senna and someone else. I can't remember who the other one was. Um, but they've all agreed to do a combined comms really? thing. Really? So it will work with mesh, with mesh Ooh, and wow. auto connect and stuff. That'll be interesting. It'll that be a, will it be a software update? Are you gonna have to yeah. buy the new version? I don't know. Yeah, you're probably gonna have I, to buy a new. I used a, an intercom for the first time the other day, and it was it was a whole conversations that I used to have with myself, yeah. which were private. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> were now forget. recorded. You do forget, don't yeah. you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I, I remember, God, back in the day, swing the old lamp. I used paper maps. I didn't, I wouldn't have a sat nav on my bike because I was mm. like, nah, not a chance, just don't need it. And why the hell would I want to talk to somebody on my phone? Don't be daft, mm. I'm on my bike to get away from all that. I don't mm -hmm. want to listen to music. Now I've got <laughs> my phone there with the sat nav and on, on that. And then I've got a camera recording everything I say and do. Comms, where I'm either connected to 14 other people on mm. a trip listening to everybody waffle or you listen to music, podcasts, on the phone. You just you just get used to it, don't you? Yeah. Mm. See, I had music on, but I didn't... There was only times when I realised the music was on. Yeah. Because my concentration was past it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And then it was only when you got a bit of straight road where you're like, yeah. oh, yeah, that tune's playing now. Yeah. But I think I could quite happily not have music. Mm. But the, the, the ability to talk to someone, so it's like, oh, watch out for this. Or, yeah, that's good. Joe, yeah, it's clear you can overtake. Yeah. Those kind of things really did. I still can't do that. When we're on tour, people, the lads do that all the time. They'll, somebody will take the overtake up ahead and they'll be like, yeah, yeah, you're clear, you're clear, you're clear. So everyone behind is just doing overtakes, blind overtakes on bends yeah, on and ben. stuff. I'm like, I can't do it. I, no. I need to see for myself. I just- A little bit of self-preservation. Because you never know, <laughs> you know, like a deer could have walked out or, I mean, a deer could walk out anything. Well, they, they could go past the junction. Exactly. And then someone, yeah pulls on behind them and yeah. Yeah. you're going to be the first to find Which I've out. seen, you know, like, you would think most people would pick up the junction and, and realise, okay, right, it's not safe, it's yeah, not yeah. clear. But other people just don't pick any of that up. Yeah, it's all clear. <laughs> Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> um, dude, I feel, like, I feel like we should end the podcast on the lid in some form. Yeah. Like, wow. I mean, I just want to sit and stare at it. I just want to sit and stare and pick up what you've done on it. Is there any other YouTubers who've got custom lids? Uh, YouTubers? I don't think there is. Not unless they race, anyway. The race is 11. Uh, oh, Pug I mean, Pugwash has got his, hasn't he? Um, oh, yeah, of course, Pugwash. He's Pugwash. got his YouTube on the side of it as well. Yeah, yeah. See, I, he, he's done some funny videos, he has. Some of the... He's but, a character, isn't he? He is a character. And a real character. Do you remember The Crumble? Yeah, Did you yeah. ever watch uh -huh. The Crumble? Uh-huh. I wish his stuff was still on there. I, somebody told me he was coming back. He was I getting back into it. I, I would... To be honest, I know he took he took a lot of the, the kind of more edgy stuff off mm -hmm. because he was trying to grow it into something. Yeah. But I would literally create a channel for his edgy stuff and post it for him <laughs> because it was so funny. I was telling people here, Joe, people I work with, about it literally last night, saying, so, you know, he went into the petrol station, bought this magazine, and <laughs> we all know what that magazine was, but yeah, it's it, this Garbage World scenes. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Penthouse on it. 
Oh. <laughs> Mate, I love it. I absolutely yeah. love it. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Was it worth a year away? Though? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I love it. That, that map on the back, you'll see on the B-roll, folks, but just the, the, way, the way you've used that to transition between you know, tarmac and the off-road, I love it. And the map, how much bloody detail have you put in on a map? Jesus. There is, I mean, it's all correct, but I have, in the odd place, I've had to add a tiny bit just because some of the gaps between the continents were too big. It didn't look like it was breaking. <laughs> right. Um, and then obviously on this side, it's really kind of trying to fill the gaps so that it cracks up correctly. I love it. Yeah. What I'll do after this, I think I've said already, folks, but after this, I'll make sure I do plenty of B-roll so you can hopefully be you'll be watching what I'm talking about. And then I think I, what I'll do is I'll do a little snippet reel or something or a wee short for the main Teapot channel just to get people over and see it. As well, the thing is now you've got Teapot written on your helmet with a YouTube logo. If you start cutting up people on the road, they're going to be on your channel. <laughs> Mate, I know. Going. I know. <laughs> well, I can't really hide this. Anyway, you know, it's the big bloke with the stupid beard. Yeah. Awesome. Have you checked it fits? Did you get the right size? God, here we go. Here we <laughs> this go. This is how we finish it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, no. Right. That new helmet smell. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, God. How nice is it putting a new lid on? My one stinks, and I've washed it as well. Look at that. Just need yeah. a tinted visor, haven't it? Does my bum look big? <laughs> Dude, let me get that off, lovely. Right. I've got, I've got to go and do a talk in Derbyshire now. Yeah. Might wear it there. Mate, thanks again. Been really do appreciate pleasure. it. And, thanks um, for coming up and seeing us. Oh, if people do want a uh, a custom lid. <laughs> yeah. Do, I've got plenty of contacts okay. who are doing it right. full time. So by all means, send me a message um, and I'll, I can point you in the direction of someone who's good. Or if it sounds like an interesting project mm -hmm. and I've got time to do it, there I might go. just do it. <laughs> but yeah. The... Awesome. And if people want to pick up your uh, socials that you're doing, where do they go? Um, for here, yep. My Moto on YouTube, mm -hmm. and then Instagram. You've got My Moto Manchester Leeds Derbyshire, yep. and same for Facebook. Okay. So we're building, building. Hopefully, something good. Yeah, that we can all be involved in. And all those links will be down below, folks. So make sure you give them a like, a follow, a subscribe. If you like the content share it out amongst all your mates and the same goes with the podcast folks hope you've enjoyed this one speaking of the podcast um please like comment subscribe if you're listening uh if you wouldn't mind leaving us a little rating somewhere i think on spotify on apple you can leave a rating that has a huge effect on whether or not the algorithms over there pick it up and where you rank in the charts all this some usual malarkey uh folks hope you're enjoying it keep doing your thing Get on out there whenever you can. Look after those that you love. But most importantly, most importantly, live your life. woo -ha! <laughs> Dude, mega. Mate, I'm so chuffed. Thank you so much. Let me stop these.